The screencast is to go over some of the basic parts of electrochemical cells, what we call those batteries, and to also show you how to calculate something, a new calculation called cell potential. And what that means is um, the voltage of the battery. So the image that you see here is a pretty standard setup uh, that we used in lab to create an electrochemical cell. And all we mean by electrochemical cell is that we made a battery. A couple of things to point out. Notice the flow of electrons. They always flow from the anode to the cathode. And this hopefully makes sense because the anode produces those electrons. You'll see those electrons are produced through the oxidation, in this example, of zinc. And then when they reach the cathode, right, the cathode right here, which is copper metal, they're consumed. They're consumed in the reduction process. So the big idea, whatever electrons you produce are then going to be consumed in the reduction process. So we can actually calculate the exact voltage that a battery should have. If you remember from the preparing today, I showed you several different types of batteries and they had voltages between 1.5 volts all the way up to close to 3 volts for the lithium ion battery. And the key thing that you need to know to be able to determine cell potential is the reaction. In particular, the reaction for the oxidation process and then the reaction for the reduction process. So let's take an example of a different battery. So let's say that I've got a battery that's composed of a, metal, a strip of metal of chromium. That's CR. And then I've got another battery, half cell, over here that's got copper. So we're going to make a chromium copper battery. Draw on my salt bridge. Make sure I've got my solutions. So I need a source for ions of each of the metals. Chromium is a 3 plus. And then I would need some wires to collect, connect them together, and then I could have something. You know, like a light bulb or something that could, once I hook it up at least, there, now it would light. And I want to know what the cell potential for this particular cell would be. And the symbol that you're going to see is this, a script E with a little zero at the top. And uh, what that means for us is voltage. And the little the superscript zero just means it's at standard conditions. So standard temperature and standard pressure and standard concentration of solutions in the, ion, in the ionic solutions. So here's what we need to know about this reaction. We would need to know that chromium is the anode. So that's where oxidation occurs. And copper is the cathode. To figure out which is going to be the anode and cathode, all you need to do is look at the activity series. Chromium is more active than copper, so it's going to be the one that's oxidized. So the process for the anode would be the process of oxidation. Chromium would form chromium 3 plus and 3 electrons. And copper would consume those. So we have copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons going to copper metal. So those are our two components that we need to know. Now, the next step is going to be using something called a standard reduction potential. And you'll notice I've got an image of one here on the screencast. And all you have to do is find the particular half reactions that you're interested in. And I'm just going to draw an arrow to the ones that I'm interested in. You see that there's copper 2 plus going to copper metal and we see a voltage here of 0 0.34. And the other one is a little bit trickier because it's not written the exact same way that, um, oops, I even got the wrong one. Here we go. Here it is right here. Chromium 3 plus and chromium. Notice its value here. So we're going to take this information and I'm going to show you how to use it. To find our cell potential, we just add up the cell potential that happens at the oxidation 
half side and the reduction half reaction. So what that means for us is the oxidation process is chromium going to form chromium 3 plus plus 3 electrons and that has a voltage associated with it we can go back here and look of negative 0 0.74 now notice I wrote the equation reversed than what you see here when I reverse the direction the sign of the potential changes so instead of negative 0 0.74 it's going to be now positive 0 0.74 volts we're going to apply the same methodology here for reduction we have copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons going to form copper metal and its cell potential can look it up right here. It's 0 0.34. Notice in this case I didn't have to change the sign because my sheet is already written as reduction. So whenever you do one of these problems remember that you're always going to have to change the sign for one of the two pieces. You're going to have to change the sign of the oxidation piece. So now all I do to find my answer as I add them up. And I get 1.08 volts. Now based on that you should be able to go and think about the battery you created in lab today. You did a zinc copper battery. So think about how you go about and calculate what the cell potential would be for a zinc copper battery. Make sure you put that in your analyzing tonight. I'll be looking for it in the morning.